It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. Or we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Day two, getting culture right. Ben DeCiani, founder of Affiliated Monitors, said of the Monaco speech, quote, the announcement by Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco and the Justice Department reignited the agency's concentration of corporate liability for white-collar crimes. In doing so, she emphasized to businesses, their leadership, and the attorneys who represent them the importance of implementing and maintaining strong and effective compliance programs and how the DOJ will continue to look at these programs going forward. In other words, the criticalness of culture is now paramount. CCOs need to focus on growing corporate culture to build the ethical foundation for a successful compliance program. In a recent MIT Sloan Review magazine article, Donald Saul and Charles Saul penned an article entitled 10 Things Your Corporate Culture Needs to Get Right, in which they posited that knowing what elements of culture matter to most to employees can help leaders foster engagement as they transition to a new reality that will include more remote and hybrid work. It is an excellent review of some of the key elements around corporate culture and how CCOs can move forward to lay the foundation of one. In this piece, the authors explored what distinguishes a good corporate culture from a bad one in the eyes of employees. Of course, culture always starts at the top, but unfortunately, the authors noted an organization's official core values signal top executives' cultural aspirations rather than inflecting on the elements of corporate culture that matter most to employees. It is only by listening to what employees want that you can begin to understand how to improve culture. The authors listed 10 key elements of culture that mattered most to employees. Number one, employees feel respected. Employees are treated with consideration, courtesy, and dignity, and their perspectives are taken seriously. This is by far and away the most important factor and the best predictor of a company's culture score is whether employees feel respected at work. Respect is not only the most important factor, it stands head and shoulders above other, corp- other cultural elements in terms of its importance. Respect is nearly 18 times more important as a typical feature in our model in predicting a company's overall culture rating and almost twice as important as the second most predictive factor. The implication of this finding goes to communications to a speak-up culture and how they might be used by the compliance function. Number two, supportive leaders. Leaders help employees do their work, respond to requests, accommodate employees' individual needs, offer encouragement, and have their backs. Here the authors found employees describe supportive leaders as helping them to do their work, being responsive to requests, accommodating employees' individual needs, offering encouragement, and having their backs. Leaders, of course, influence all aspects of culture, but being a source of support for employees is especially critical and is the leadership trait most closely associated with a highly rated culture. This ties back into the respect finding and also ties into a speak-up and trust at an organization. Three, Leaders live core values. Leaders' actions are consistent with the organization's values. While the regulators focus on this issue, leaders need to see, employees rather, need to see leaders not simply espousing words but actually doing deeds. Perhaps most interestingly, employees don't expect leaders to live the core values, but they appreciate it when they do. Number four, toxic managers. Leaders can create a poisonous work environment and are described in extremely negative terms. Nothing will kill culture faster than a toxic manager. From the compliance perspective, this can be a disaster not on, for not only does a toxic manager poison the atmosphere of those around them, but also those who train under him or her will garner their toxic approach as a role model. Number five, unethical behavior. Managers and employees that, which lack integrity and act in unethical manners. Once again, this can portend a disaster for your organization as integrity is the cornerstone of most organizations' official culture and identifying toxic leaders, digging deeper to understand the context of their behavior and coaching them or removing them from leadership positions are tangible actions 
which organizations can take to root out people who are undermining corporate culture and potentially exposing the company to reputational or legal risk. Number six, benefits. Employees' assessment of all employer-provided benefits. While initially this might not seem like a compliance issue, when you look at the DOJ mandate for corporate compliance to be the bearer of institutional justice and institutional fairness, you begin to see the connection. Perhaps most interesting is that benefits are more than twice as important as compensation. Benefits are important for all employees, but which benefits matter most depend on an employee's job. Health and insurance and benefits are a better predictor of culture rating for frontline workers, while retirement benefits such as 401k plans and pensions matter more for white-collar employees. Number seven, perks. Employees' assessments of workplace amenities and perks. This finding once again calls out the CCO around institutional fairness and ties to the importance of talent acquisition, attraction, and retention. Here, the most interesting item I found for compliance was that amongst perks, company-organized social events are a particularly strong predictor of cultural score. When you control for how employees talk about perks in general, social, bu- social events like team building, happy hours, and picnics emerge as a reliable predictor of a high culture score. Organizing social events is a promising and relatively low-cost way for exec- executives to reinforce that corporate culture is about returning to the office. This provides insights on ongoing communications about compliance in the post-pandemic world. Learning and development. Employees' assessments of opportunities for formal and informal learning. This finding portends well for compliance in terms of both formal and informal compliance training and messaging. Number nine, job security. Perceived job security, including fear of layoffs, offshoring, and automation. Most compliance functions do not consider job security as a part of the corporate culture. However, the authors believe that job insecurity weighs heavily on employees' minds as they assess corporate culture. The larger the percentage of employees who talk about layoffs, outsourcing, or the possibility of getting fired, the lower the company ranks on culture. Number 10, reorganizations. How employees review view reorganizations, including frequency and quality. I found this not too surprising, but the authors did note virtually no one has any good things to say about reorganization. The fewer people who mention reorganizations, the higher the company's culture score. While you might make associate, while you might associate the mention of reorganizations with layoff and job instability, data reveals that employees' concerns on this issue speak to a wider strategic issue for companies. In conclusion, CCOs and compliance functions face a series of challenges while navigating the return-to-work era. Through corporate culture, companies can ma- must maintain a healthy culture as mandated by the Department of Justice. The authors conclude by noting, understanding the elements of culture that matter most to employees can help them maintain employee, employee engagement and a vibrant culture as they transition to the new normal. So what are today's three takeaways? Number one, what distinguishes a good corporate culture from a bad one in the eyes of your employees? Number two, a good corporate culture forms the basis of a good compliance program. Number three, how many elements of a good corporate culture are present in your organization? This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.